Let's take a closer look at the FIA's Flexi Wing Test Dilemma, which goes into the next round for this weekend's Spanish Grand Prix. Flexible wings are an old topic and already in 1995, so 30 years ago, the FIA introduced flexibility tests to avoid wings from bending too much. That aerodynamic components around the race car bend because of aerodynamic forces is normal. The question is just by how much do they flex and does the team gain an advantage from it? So for an F1 car you want a certain aero balance shift while driving. You want more front downforce for slow speed corners to have a grippy and reliable front axle. At higher speeds, most drivers want a reliable rear axle and a slightly understeering car. You can reach that by allowing the front wing flaps to bend a bit more while driving. So they back off and hence aero balance shifts to the back at higher speeds. We already talked about this topic last year and Red Bull wanted the FIA's focus on the topic. So the FIA installed cameras on cars from the Belgium Grand Prix 2024. In Azerbaijan they could see the McLaren's Mini DRS, which we explained in my other video. So they concluded that they should set tighter limits for the wing flexibility tests. This is for front and rear wing. The definition took a while and then it was a bit too late to introduce new rules, so they introduced them in different steps. For the slot gap variation of the rear wing, the difference was allowed to be 2 mm. From the Chinese Grand Prix 2025, 0.75 mm and from the Japanese Grand Prix, 0.5 mm. As we discussed before, the problem here is that the FIA only does a static load test in vertical direction and only on the first element, but not on the flap. Also, in reality, while driving, the forces are higher and come from different directions. So it's no wonder that teams pass the FIA test, but rear wings are still bending quite a lot while driving. That was the rear wing topic. Now let's talk about the front wing. Also here, the FIA wanted to introduce stricter tests. And also here, they were a bit late with that change and wanted to give teams some time to adjust without wasting too much money. So they introduced these tighter tests from the ninth race of the season in Barcelona. Also here, the FIA does a static load test in vertical direction on the main plane elements, excluding the flaps. They test with 100 kg load on both tips and the deflection should not exceed 10 instead of 15 mm. When they apply the load to one side only, the deflection shouldn't exceed 15 instead of 20 mm. But for the front wing flap deflection, they have another sensible test. They pull the trading edge of the flaps back with a force of 60 newtons normal to the flap. Deflection here should not exceed 3 instead of 5 mm. But again, these are static tests with a set direction and the reality is more complex. For the teams it means that they need to adapt their design slightly to the new limits, but the base concept stays the same. They're able to pass the static tests and camera footage while driving is no solid evidence for exact deflection numbers. Usually the FIA is randomly picking some cars for testing. This weekend in Barcelona they are a bit more nervous. Every team had to bring their front wings to the FIA. Tests happened behind closed doors. And on this weekend teams are only allowed to run front wings which have been tested before. So on Thursday, five teams had to test in the morning, five teams in the afternoon. Comparisons of old and new front wings on track are prohibited and every car needs to carry a camera. Camera footage of the first car of a team is checked in FP1, footage of the second car in FP2. In addition to that, cars will be checked under park fermic conditions right after a session to make sure teams didn't fit a different wing for testing. So you can see how nervous the FIA is about this topic, but it looks like that not much is changing for the teams. Since they are only doing static load tests on main elements and fixed directions, wings will still behave differently on track. So I hope you liked this little insight and check out my online courses if you want to work in F1 as well. See you at the next video.